Uh, hey everybody, this is Tony. Got a nice episode for you today of the show, but uh, first we're going to hear a message from Mail uh, about the goings on in the tri state metropolitan area for anybody that might be interested. So here's Al with the papers. Happy New Year. Happy to say the bathroom down in a basement bar is fully rehabilitated, it's been refacilitated. It's great. Everything's good. We're doing a trim today, so I'm over here at Roma's Beef getting some beefs for the guys. I just wanted to share with you guys some reading material that I got today. Let me switch the view here. There we go. We're looking at the Cook County Chronicle. And this is a newspaper that's going to keep you informed about goings on in the county. As you can see, it's complimentary. And, you know, they cover a lot of things. What I appreciate about it on the front cover, right next to the title, they got Stephen Trackman, personal injury attorney with the medical background. He's a big supporter of the Cook County Chronicle. Let's take a look, see here, see what's going on. Oh, there's old Stephen himself. Look at him. Oh, wow. He's got it. He's actually got a stethoscope on and he's an attorney that should uh, be found to be unsettling by anyone in their right mind. Wow. But, you know, as you could see from the cover, you know, they got you covering things like nursing home reforms on agenda. Uh, but that Medicaid payment, let me tell you, they got to work that out in the state Senate over there. Illinois minimum wage going to go up to 12 per hour in 2022. That's nice. Uh, Cook County gets uh, $2.5 million for Calumet City's uh, Wilder Fields. A lot of nice things happening in the southeast region of Chicago. Uh, you're going to be able to become a midwife uh, legally. That's nice. Couldn't do that before. And then they got something about the urban farmers and the rural farmers. Very interesting things. You know, some television content, some things like that. Uh, musical sleuth. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Forgotten classical works by composers with Chicago ties. Okay, we could learn about that. Some people doing things from UIC. And then here you go. Uh, it's serving its true purpose as a, uh, as a paper to, uh, you know, sell, uh, sell ads to put your uh, public announcements in when you transfer property and whatnot. You could see what's going down. Real nice ad for Swaparama in there. Tell you what, that place is amazing. But, you know, there's some good stuff in here. I could keep going. Uh, we got, you know... Less mercury in your flu shot. There we go. Then in a can of tuna, you know, they got some syndicated health content in here, which ain't too bad. So thanks for doing that and taking a trip through the Cook County Chronicle with me. Uh, I'm going to go in here to Roma's Beef and pick up the sandwiches for the guys. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tony. Uh, you're watching Crime Page, but Bonnie doesn't. Today I'm in beautiful West Texas. Beautiful Brewster County, Texas, on a campus of Sewell Ross University. Sewell Ross, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the uh, at some poached cacti that were sent here by Fish and Wildlife, which had been intercepted uh, en route from Mexico, to, uh, presumably to markets overseas, either in uh, Asia or in uh, Eastern Europe. So you could see they still got they still got the box, the packaging, nice, you know. We could do a plug for pack, wrap, and send or something right now. You know, by the way, UPS has been fucking owing me a package for the last three weeks. You know, but uh, I haven't gotten it yet. Who knows what the shit's going on over there. Still better than using the post office. All right? Fucking Louis DeJoy, sleazebang. How's that guy still in there? Anyway, let's take a look at some of the stuff uh, that was received. Now, as you can see, these just got potted up. What you're looking at is an extremely rare species of cactus uh, known as uh, Pellicifera. The genus is Pellicifera, the species is Pellicifera aceliformis. Uh, there's two species in the genus, both are extremely rare. Pellicifera strobiliformis is a little bit rarer, but as you can see, uh, it's a weird looking bastard, like a lot of cacti can tend to be. You can see they've been potted up. When they were right, when they were shipped here, you got a little, a little uh, astrophytum. Looks like it needs some water. Anytime you see cacti all wrinkled like that, they need some water. Or maybe they rot it out because you put it into a too organic rich and moist of a mix. But either way, a little, little astrophytum. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> uh, these were shipped. They were just, you know, cacti are just like little batteries. 
you know, main, if they're plump, they're maintaining all the carbohydrates and moisture that they need, you know, so that's why they're so easy to poach. Part of the reason is because they, they stay alive long after you've ripped them out of the ground. Uh, so these were, these arrived basically bare root. Uh, the horticulturalist here basically put them up, potted them up. Look at it, you got some tiny ones right there. And, uh, you know, who knows what they're going to end up doing with them. Here's some Areocarpus fissuratus. These were poached in West Texas. And uh, got quite a few other uh, interesting plants over there. This is a Astrophytum Capricorn variety orium. Look at those. Look at a little white speckling. The white speckling just looks like, uh, let's take a look and see what that uh, looks like. Looks like uh, just little clusters of trichomes. Remember, trichomes is just a fancy word for hairs. Little clusters of hairs on the epidermal tissue of this plant. Looks like it's got some, who knows what that's from, insect damage or rot. Insects will go for these if, uh, you know, if, they're, if, the, if the conditions aren't right. So they're not getting enough sun or the soil mixture's not right or the temperature's not right. The cactus's, the cacti's metabolism, metabolism slows down. Uh, you know, it's quote-unquote immune system if you want to think of it like that and then that leaves it open to insect attack But uh, either way, this was a huge bounty. This was a huge bounty that some sleazebag poachers had ripped out of the ground down by San Luis Potosi in central Mexico Where these grow basically the western slope of the Sierra Madre Oriental Remember in the Sierra Madre, which is the north to south trending mountain range the rains come from the east All right from the Atlantic from the Atlantic side Okay, and they, they head west, and then of course they go up that mountain range, and uh, which acts as a rain shadow, kind of squeezes the sponge of the clouds, the air loses its moisture, and then that's why on the west side of that mountain range in the Sierra Madre Oriental, you got uh, a lot of interesting cacti, and you got a lot of interesting habitat, lots of limestone, lots of gypsum, wild shit. And so evolution has produced some marvels, and humans, because we're like magpies, we're more like crackheads that like the shiny shit, uh, we think it's ours to go take out and destroy. But of course, these things produce flowers. They're important uh, sources of nectar for pollinators in the region, important parts of the local uh, ecosystem and ecology. And uh, for some sleaze bag to come take it out and sell it for God knows how much, these are probably a lot of fucking money. I saw some dipshit selling a large one for like 1500 bucks on eBay. I'm gonna mail him some dog shit. You ever mailed anybody dog shit before? <clears throat> but, uh, and what he was selling was almost certainly poached. It looked pretty weathered. It looked pretty beaten and weathered. It didn't look like, uh, you know, it had been seed grown, seed grown, you know. So uh, anyway, these, you know, these get these get poached, they get ripped out of habitat, and then, you know, it gets sold to some, uh, you know, someone who considers himself a succulent, a succulent freak, a collector, who may not have the scruples, uh, you know, necessary to avoid buying a poached plant, or maybe just doesn't have a good bullshit radar and can't tell if the plant's been poached or not, they purchase it for far too much money and then slowly kill it on their mantle so they can, uh, you know, have a piece of, uh, I don't know, I don't fucking understand it, to be honest. You know, I like growing plants uh, to give to people or to, you know, put back in habitat or for conservation purposes or to, for educational purposes. It belongs in a museum. I don't really understand a collector thing. No, I'm not talking shit in it. If that's your thing, power to you. But do it ethically and learn to grow the fucking things from seed rather than just buying poached plants on eBay from some dipshit, you know, who's uh, who's trafficking in them. Of course, the thing you got to think about with these, these bastards is that this is a sliver. This is a tiny fraction of what's probably been poached in the last few years. For everyone that gets caught, there's probably 50 more that don't get caught. And so what you're looking at is just wholesale habitat destruction. Astrophytum's a weird genus, huh? You got quite a few species and there are lots of variation. You got the little, you know, flat bastards that just sink into the ground, Astrophytum mysterious, another uh, endangered cactus in South Texas and uh, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Astrophytum mysterious, the star cactus. Uh, you got Myriostigma, you got all kinds of weird, weird bastards. But again, the Pelliciferas are, it's something else. You got a pink flower on these guys when they go off. The astrophytum, as you can see, you still got the uh, flower on there. You got the uh, the perianth, all dried. You can still see, got a little bit of yellow in there. But uh, looks like some of these are, you know, getting attacked by insects. Again, this is my little spiel for my thoughts 
on insect damage of cactus and, and other plants too. If they're getting damaged by insects before you go spraying some nasty shit or spending money on beneficial insects or fungi, half of which probably won't work, pay attention to the growing conditions. If you were to take this and you were to try to grow it, say outdoors in a climate like the San Francisco Bay Area, it would die. All right, not only would it probably rot, but again, the immune system, it would go through plant immunodeficiency, okay? Because it doesn't have the heat to keep its metabolism up. Warmth for a lot of cacti is more important than direct sunlight. They like the bright light, but they also really need the warmth. Peyote, you know, when you see them growing in habitat in South Texas, Northern, Northern Mexico, it, well, it depends on what the habitat is like. But down in South Texas, they grow underneath Misky, you'll not you rarely find them growing out in the out in the open sun. Okay, they, so in that case, the the warmth is more. It was fucking 85 degrees in South Texas on Christmas, so that gives you an idea of the climate down there. All right, so the warmth for peyotes, for like Lophophorus, for instance, is almost more important than the than the direct sun. Okay, especially if you live in a really hot climate. Like if you live in Phoenix, don't put a fucking peyote outdoors exposed in full sun. Okay, you need a nurse plant or a shade over it of some kind but anyway uh back to my spiel what i was saying if if they if you know somebody's end up getting insect damage or whatever you know it could be a temperature thing that's what i would first pay attention to you know focus on the temperature make sure you know what kind of temperature that the plant likes and uh make sure the soil is correct you're getting enough drainage lift the pot up feel how heavy it is if it's been moist and you know stick your finger in there See, it always sounds gross when you say that, doesn't it? You always say stick your finger in there. You, see, you know, what the fuck? Sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> apparently I had the sense of humor of a 10-year-old. You know, you're never too old for toilet humor. But anyway, stick your finger in there. See what the, if, there, if it's moist, if you come into contact with moist soil, whatever. So uh, hopefully, you know, these can be uh, grown out. You can see right here, now they got this shade up there because it gets 100 goddamn degrees during the summer here. And it's the ambient humidity uh, is pretty low. It's another thing. You go to South Texas and probably some places of uh, northern Mexico too, depending on what side of that Sierra Madre range you are, the humidity is much higher. Humidity, having high relative humidity, means the difference between day and night temperatures is going to be not that great. Okay? It, it might be 80 during the day and only get down to 65 at night, 70 during, you know, but if you go to like a desert, could be 90 during the day and it could get down to 50 at night because that, that there's no humidity in the desert that humidity acts as a is a uh it holds the heat in you know water holds on the heat unlike air so that's something to consider as well it's the same reason why a lot of plants that grow in in regions that have a high daytime temperatures and then cool nights you bring them to you know, a, a climate like Florida or something where there's so much humidity, there's not much of a difference between day and night temperatures. They just, they end up not, they end up not doing very well because they don't have the cool nights that their metabolism needs. All right. Because yes, plants create their own food, but they also metabolize their own food and respire. They have a metabolism uh, as well. So that's something to consider anyway. Look at these, another, another variation on the genus Astrophytum. There you go, there's a there's a uh, Astrophytum marius stigma, and you can see those little scales are much more abundant. Little clusters of trichomes. Let's let's try to take a close look. I can see why someone was poaching these. These are a fucking beaut. Look at that. What a beautiful plant. You got the clusters of trichomes up top, little scales. The Japanese are breeding the shit out of these. Alright, they, they know how to do it. Flood the market, breed them, grow them from seed, flood the market. So the sleaze bags that try to poach these things, you know, and I shouldn't say sleaze bags. You know, so probably some poaching is due to the fact that people are broke as fuck and they're getting fucked over, and they don't have any, uh, you know, there's no decent jobs on it. Don't have any any income, and so taking apart the landscape of their region, uh, which is something humans have always done so well, if we don't have the right ethos in our culture, uh, you know, taking apart your native landscape just for survival often it's just for personal gain you know it goes beyond survival but taking apart your native landscape you know selling selling out your local ecosystem so you can just uh, have something to eat is going to be a normal uh you know a normal reaction but you know what i guess it's probably not what's going on here there's a uh, 
I don't know, who knows. I know in South Africa, a lot of the plant poaching was done. You know, uh, people overseas were hiring very impoverished locals to do the plant poaching down there. There was something that happened too. But plant poaching is something that goes on everywhere. And a lot of people, uh, you know, these people who are not botany inclined probably don't even think think about it. You know, they don't they don't realize that uh, they don't they don't think of uh, plants being something desirable enough to poach. But you know, you could sell one of these fucking pots for 500 bucks at least. It ends up uh, becoming something people consider. So I want to find those people. Yeah, get their addresses and take a dump, you know, if they're going to shit, shit where the plants are, I want to shit where they live, you know. Maybe I'll go take a dump, uh, you know, in their front yard. Why well, always got to make it like that? Why well, always got to make it, uh, make it filthy like that, you know. Look at it, look at a cuticle on us. But yeah, and if they live in an apartment, maybe I'll, you know, lean against their door and take a dump, you know, just kind of like the bummies do in L.A. under the viaduct, you know. You ever seen a homeless guy shitting against the wall before? lived in California long enough to know what that looks like. Aerial carp is so beautiful. They flower late October, maybe the first week of November, just laying prostrate with the ground, laying flat with the ground, flush with the ground. And then you see these little pink, uh, little pink blooms coming up. All right, let's go check out the other species over there. Okay, and here's, here's the latest gift from uh, US Fish and Wildlife. I guess these were seized near the Sierra Blanca uh, border station, which uh, you know was also the border station that uh, who was it? There was some rapper they arrested for weed. There was another fuck. I can't believe Texas still has cannabis is illegal. Hey, how fucking long are you gonna hold out? You know, I, I don't even care about this stuff really, but I just you know whatever. Anyway, that that rant aside, Sierra Blanca border station. Here's a shout out to you. Buy all you uh, all you customs agents cupcakes sometime. All right. But anyway, they confiscated this there. You know, some sleaze bag was uh, was poaching these. Had a bunch of these ripped out. You could see they just uh, these were put in a potting mix. So the, the whoever poached them was moron enough to not even know what soil these things would need. They had it in a regular potting mix. So a couple of them were rotting. Uh, you know, because it was just too wet. And I mean, these things can really they can you know they're out there. It's, it's fucking 110 degrees in the summer. And, uh, you know, these things are going <laughs> to, they're, they're extremely, they need it. They're used to very hot temperatures, or if it's going to be cool temperatures, it's very dry. So to have these things in a wet potting mix, like you can still see there's still some left right there, uh, ensures instant death. All right, drainage, drainage, drainage. You want something, if you're going to pot these up, that just, the soil does not hold on to any moisture. It just runs right through. Cactus roots are like a sponge. All right, it's like a dry sponge. They soak up moisture so quick. That's their evolutionary adaptation to growing in a place where it very seldom rains and where it gets hot as balls. Anyway, the Echinocactus horizontalonius, often seen growing on limestone, almost always seen growing on limestone, but I've seen it growing on metamorphic rock before. Uh, these are quite common, but uh, that doesn't mean that you should still rip them out of the ground, you know? Take the fruits if you want and get the seeds, you know, do something that takes some fucking skill. Don't just steal from the, the local ecosystem. Because, again, these things produce flowers. They're important uh, hideaways for rodents and uh, other mammals. And the flowers, of course, are an important food source. But anyway, the kind of cactus, horizontalonius. Oh, and they got some Mammillaria melanocentra. Melanocentra. From the deserts of Coahuila, Nuevo Leon, Durango. All these beautiful states in northern Mexico. Looks like they got some spider mites too. You see the little webby shit? Again, give them, give them the right conditions, give them some moisture, maybe a tiny bit of fertilizer. Make sure to get, so something here is, is not right. You're not getting enough light or the soil's not right or something, but either way, those uh, pests should not be taken over to the extent that they are. And they only do so once the plant's quote unquote immune system, if you want to think of it like that, is compromised. So before you go, sometimes you gotta, you know, use the systemics and sprays and shit, but try to avoid it at all costs. Always try to improve the conditions to the extent that you can. Anyway, look at the tubercles on it. Look at the tubercles on it. You got the radial spines, you got a little tuft of trichomes at the end of that tubercle, the distal end of that tubercle. You got the, looks like the, uh, the spines are black. Remember, when spines first emerge, they're living tissue, and then as the plant senesces, as it grows, 
the spine's dying and quote harden off and that's when they get their defensive capabilities but uh that's a it's like a spherical it's a spherical globe of nipples of tubercles of aerials aerials of course being those things right there where the spines emerge from but the tubercle is that uh, green protrusion radial spines and then you got how many central spines you got it looks like you got a tree three or four there you go neoloidia conoidea this one's actually grows in west texas these were probably grown from seed looks like it beautiful spherical tubercles look at a spherical tubercles spinning around the little rat huh you dick you could stare at these all day you know it's like looking at the fire sometimes huh i'll get a little woo woo you think i can't get woo woo think i'm too much of an asshole to get woo woo that's not true i can get woo woo i'll, I'll show you some fucking woo woo anyway i, I digress another uh, another product of uh, fish and wildlife these guys work these guys work because they don't grow in the states they don't grow in the united states these are uh, uh hecho and mexico like that scale damage down there you poor bastards anyway so this population uh northern mexico west texas uh you get a get a few in new mexico too only grows on limestone due to a discordant uh exposure a disjunct exposure of limestone in southern arizona you have a, a different uh, variety of these, variety Nicolzii, that grows in Arizona too. Because most of southern Arizona is volcanic rock, it's extrusive igneous, which has a different chemical makeup, of course, than, uh, than the limestone and the calcium carbonate. So uh, since, since this plant is mostly adapted to growing on limestone, it's not going to thrive. It doesn't grow on volcanics, really. So, you know, but, but because there's that little exposure of limestone in southern Arizona, southeast Arizona, you get a, uh, this plant can grow and there's a variety. Apparently it's been separated from the mother population in Texas long enough uh, to have uh, produced some slight variations in its morphology. It looks a little bit different. It's got some differences in the flower. Anyway, all, all, uh, all statements aside, wonderful plant, common. You can see uh, this is here because Fish and Wildlife confiscated it, just like these guys over there. And look at that. What are they gonna do with all those, you know? You maybe only need one or two specimens for teaching, you know, a few specimens uh, to put in a, a greenhouse for breeding for ex situ conservation, for breeding it out of habitat, because damn well, some of these species will probably be extinct in the wild uh, within our lifetime, which, you know, may not be very long, uh, given how uh, humans are behaving recently on the world stage. But regardless, you know what I mean. Ex situ conservation is important for a lot of these so, and again, that's uh, the importance of some of these collectors, at least if they're doing it ethically, collectors can act as conservationists, all right? As long as they're not supporting unethical collecting and poaching, and uh, as long as they're growing from seed. Grow shit from seed. It always takes more skill to grow shit from seed, to learn to grow from seed. And, uh, you know, once you do that, you could sell them, you can give them away to friends, whatever. Always grow from seed. You can buy seeds and most of these things online which really, I don't understand why anyone is still poaching. But uh, you know, humans are dumb and, uh, and greedy. So, you know, <laughs> forgive my cynicism, but by and large, is the herd, so as the herd goes, that statement is true. So it doesn't surprise me people do stupid shit, stupid destructive shit. So like I've always said, you'll never go wrong overestimating somebody's uh, malice or stupidity or greed, you know? People just don't think sometimes, right? Everyone's got potential, but they're just maybe not using it. And so they try to take the easy way out. Blame the education system. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Look at a beautiful swamp cooler they got over there, nice. That's all I got. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself, bye.